Hello everyone and welcome to Chat 19, a podcasty style thingamajig featuring the players you love from Nat 19. Here we'll be delving into some of your most burning questions you submitted using the hashtag ChatNat19, as the hashtag Chat19 was already taken by a restaurant in New York. I am your host, Chase Coffin Jockey Corbin, and I am joined today by some lovely, lovely people. And how about you introduce yourselves as well as a little bit of info about your character, Spencer? No. Tell me. Tell no. me, Spencer. No. Spencer. Oh, fine. Spencer. It's fine. part of it's part of the podcast, Spencer. Oh, I, I reject your podcast. No. Uh, no. All right. Please, Spencer. Uh, I- <laughs> I'm Spencer, also known as Buddy VA. I play uh, I play Vogan. I'm also like a, a a DM doing the Tomb of Annihilation sometimes. But Woo! yeah, it's what I do for Net Nineteen stuff. Yay! What what what's Vogan like? What's he about? I you assume know. he's a human fighter. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, he's a hobgoblin fighter. You fool. <laughs> 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 obviously no nah, he uh my boy vogan is a hobgoblin fighter uh way of the blue metal subclass mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's pretty it's pretty fun well all right is yeah, boy an anger boy is yeah. boy what's your situation introduce Hi. yourself i is easy um i i, I play raleigh vermilion aka a- aristo tanwin A.K.A. Raleigh Contembile, A.K.A. Raleigh the Dad Slayer, and many yeah. other things. I'm sure he's a he's a he's a Dompier warlock that I play. He's he's kind of a he's kind of a scoundrel, kind of a butthole. It's true. So, one of them liar boys. Ah, oh, one of them liar boys. Yeah. What a good time. What so, a cool time. this question. I'm sure this very first question was sent to us on Twitter, and I think when they sent it, there's probably some reference in-game that I don't know, because I do not watch the show. I merely host this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the the question had so many different implications that I was immediately <laughs> interested in that I had to put it first. Okay. The question is, Raleigh. Describe the perfect steak in great detail. <laughs> Does Vogan oh. agree with that answer? <laughs> oh, you that is not tell fair. Me, tell me, <laughs> ooh, my face, Izzy, what the perfect steak is like in character you know and I in can't great detail. I can't answer this in a way that'll satisfy you. <laughs> Izzy just like cooked, I guess. <laughs> Apply some amount of heat. I hear people like it when it's sort of pink, <laughs> but like not too pink. Unless you mm. like that, then make it more pink. Mm. But like, no, nobody likes it really burned. I think well done is bad, from what I understand. No, a little, little charcoal is fine. <laughs> well, now I don't know what to believe. This, is, this already, before any backstory, was already one of the most divisive possible questions that could have been asked on this podcast. This is a very opinionated question. Many people have many feelings about steak. <laughs> and for it's more you, divisive than like religion as a topic. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I had to say what Raleigh would <laughs> would like, I imagine on the 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 rarer side, little uh, little bloody, for you know, he likes his steaks blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get that. I blue imagine rare. he enjoys that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. that's a good time. And I I also assume with with a salt rub because you got to get that salt in them wounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Does Vogan right. agree with that? Not at all. No. <laughs> Vogan's like, no. Well done with ketchup. That's the best <laughs> thing. I like my steak like I like my meatloaf. <laughs> no, uh, he, he likes his uh, medium rare. <laughs> Entire cook. Yeah, cooked like char- a little bit of charcoal on the outside. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. That's that's a good time. All right. Mm-hmm. Next question is for Vogan. Okay. So Vogan, 
Seems mm. like you're really getting along well with Mary Mist. Wink, wonk. Is <laughs> anything gonna happen there? <laughs> I could not possibly tell you. <laughs> I there was one interaction where, like, I, I I'm assuming you don't know about the the incident. Not the chase at all. <laughs> <laughs> so they, the party was like exploring this like haunted house, or whatever. Uh, there were ghosties about, and Mary Mist, like the uh, the wizard girl uh, NPC that hangs around in the party, um, she was looking at this bookcase, and one of the bookcases was about to like fall on her, just because spooky ghost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so Vogan rushed in and like grabbed her, and then like yanked her out of the way just in time and then they had like a little like she was a little embarrassed or whatever and it was it's just a cute moment and people really cling on to that <laughs> boy do they yeah do they cling on to it say tenderly and lovingly but firmly with strong arms in protection as Hogan <laughs> did for Mary Mist when he saved her <laughs> it may be maybe <laughs> the sweat slightly glistening off of his well-toned muscles mm-hmm oh they're yeah, very well-toned yeah. oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh good wink wonk wink, wink wonk, wonk indeed, indeed. <laughs> The next but, question yeah. is is for both is for both of you, uh -huh. and it's somewhat related to the previous question. Who would you wife? Who would you wife? <laughs> Perhaps you wife? Mary Mist. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Izzy, you you answer this first. <laughs> Fucking. Go ahead and um, take that. I don't know that. Raleigh's really thinking about that too much. He has, like, real issues feeling okay with connecting with people because he's spent so much of his life around spies and, like, learning, like, no, you keep every bit of information, like, buried deep down. Like, information is power. Like, if you open up to people, they can use that against you. And, like, if you get close to people, that's just leverage someone has against you type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's taken a lot of time for him to slowly unlearn that and feel safe around people. But, um, yeah, if it was anyone we've met so far, I would say either, either Fenris or Quintus. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Probably Ooh. Leaning, leaning more toward Quintus. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Like him. But the tea <laughs> is especially hot today. Yes. <laughs> like Quintus more than anyone else, like really gave him the benefit of the doubt when he di really did not deserve it. And that meant a lot to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he gives everyone the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah, he does. It still means to a lot. To a fault. <laughs> so to a fault. Yeah. We're trying to teach him to be more jaded. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to teach people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, the world, you need to see that the world sucks just a little bit more than you think. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, no, that's cute as butts, though. <laughs> I ship uh, it. I ship it. All right, next question. <laughs> Not next question. Yeah, Same question. <laughs> Maybe Ooh. Mary missed wink, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, who would who would Vogan wife? Uh. He's sort of in that same situation as like uh, as Raleigh, where like he, his mind isn't on that at the moment. Like he's he's all, he was a really screwed up individual <laughs> uh, in in his past life, where he was captain of the of the Hellrock Army or a captain of the Hellrock Army, uh, where he was just a cruel monster uh, who didn't who just took what he wanted and didn't really. Uh, you know, check to see if anyone was okay with that. But at the moment, like he he realizes he was he he done wrong, uh, and he's trying to fix himself. And because of that, like his mind's not on that right now. It's like, no, I'm I'm too fucked up of an individual. I'm not gonna drag someone down with me. <laughs> Aww. 
Uh, but assuming that he was less fucked up. Before. But if he was less fucked up. <laughs> Probably... <clears throat> like... Merry Mist or, like, Lyra? Ooh. Oh. Yeah. If anybody... If anywhere, anybody mm -hmm. were to fall into that category. Okay, but what are the advantages to each? Why why did you land on these options? Uh, Mary Mist, just due to, like... I guess they they had that that dude they did have that one moment, um, <laughs> but uh, that's that's uh, pretty much it. He's gonna have to why. like get to know her, but a little more. I, I She's thought a, when she... you were about to answer, you were gonna say something like "Mary Mist, purely physical, nothing yeah. emotional there." <laughs> <laughs> but that's all Bogan's emotionally ready for right now, so it works out. Yeah, hit it and quit it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden and quit it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Mary Miss just for like uh, very very little reasons. Um, she's very she's very cute. She's uh, uh, quiet, keeps to herself. They they had that moment when the in the haunted house. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I guess Lyra just due to uh. No, no good reason really uh, <laughs> she's she's very she's very pretty um and she's very uh charismatic and very friendly with people i feel like that's what like vogan wants to be like he wants to be a good uh a good friend to people like he wants to be charismatic but he can't be <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it's not it's not in the numbers man that's cute as shit oh darn right <laughs> both of you were like when when asked like what's what's your primary ship like what's your character interested in both of you mm -hmm. were basically like i want someone that can complete me as a person someone yeah. who's like my opposite <laughs> that can fill in the gaps yeah <laughs> yeah man neither of you were like they hot as fuck i want a bone like that yeah. wasn't <laughs> Oh, no, where's that's, that's Carrie when you need her? Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want us to be shallow? We can work no, on it. All right. No, it's fine. You just take take some notes home. It's your homework. Okay, All right, cool, cool. Cool. Yeah, there All you right. go. All right. Give that a good think. Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. For the next question, it is for a both of you. Mm -hmm. What's something that you have done in the past that you're proud of, but hasn't come up yet in the story or in discussions? <laughs> Go on. Hogan? Yes. I've... Tell me. You know... Tell Do me. You know about... Have I told you about his backstory? You you kind of described it very briefly, but just in case, go very ahead and, and spell it out a little more. So he was a... Like I said, he was a hell... he was a captain of the Hellrock army, which is just a massive uh, army in the strike lands of hobgoblins and like, uh, like goblin-oid creatures and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was particularly like a cruel being. Like he would go out of his way to like, uh, to fight and slaughter essentially. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was like his, his main pastime. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> if he asked him at the time, what would be his proudest moment? <laughs> He'd have a lot to be proud for. Like, ah, oh, did you see the the way I cut off that dude's head and just made it uh, made his mom drink drink his blood? It was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Vogan, at the moment, looking back on his past, is just filled with regret and just and just bad times. Man, he he did not he does not look fondly upon the past. Um, okay, but would he, would he, I, I guess this has come up, but would you say that Vogan is proud that he has tried to start turning over a new leaf? Oh yeah, definitely. He's, uh, he's proud, at the moment he's proud of like the progress he's made, um, up until, up until like where he currently stands. <laughs> he... Um, in the, in like the past couple sessions, like he's, he's been traveling with his, uh, with his master who he helped rescue from the crystal queen's palace. 
and she they they had like some some bonding moments in the in the castle where she's basically told him that she she's proud of the strides he's made and that filled him with with glee and joy mm. so he feels like he's he's making some steps in the in the correct uh direction heck yeah so yeah that's good does proud raleigh have anything that raleigh is proud of hmm um, I would think po possibly the first time that uh, his mentor kind of took him out in public and like took him on a mission because uh, because of his uh, kind of unique situation being, you know, the son of a crime or the bastard son of a crime lord and also a half vampire. He mm -hmm. spent a good portion of his early childhood just kind of being locked in a basement, uh, being put to work, just like forging documents so he'd have something to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until a little bit later on when like his mentor like made the effort to kind of bond with him and push the, uh, the family to let him train to be a spy so that he could actually socialize with people and not be completely, you know, like a hermit. So it... I think it, I think it meant a lot to him. And he was really proud when he finally got to kind of put his training to use and go out on a mission and kind of see the world for the first time. That's fair. Side note: What a trial by fire to go from <laughs> like, "Hey, you're you're forging documents, right? That's really cool. Go be a spy, a full on spy." <laughs> <laughs> I know Speaking you've never that man's house and anyone. murder him. <laughs> I, know, I know you've never spoken to anyone before, but go ahead and adopt a disguise and systematically fool everyone in this social gathering where you are on full display that you belong there and get all the information from this party. Like, go ahead and be a spy. You know, it's like it's hard. Just go do it. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine there was a pretty good training period where he was still, like, basically in a basement, but him, like, teaching him the, the theory of spycraft before <laughs> kind of easing him into it. It's like, all right, just go to, like, go to this shopkeeper and see if you can, like, grift him or something. Like, mm -hmm. figure out his, his store's biggest secrets or something like that. He's got a book just, like, <laughs> being a spy for dummies. And he's just reading. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. There's a there's a Team Fortress Two video of of uh, spy and scout and spy's yeah. like seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bucket of chicken. <laughs> it was exactly like that. that yes. <laughs> well, I haven't seen that video, but I gotta find it. It's okay. so good. Absolutely, look it up for you and anybody watching this video. But mm. at any rate, at any rate, next mm. question is. For Rodney. Oh. Do you think there's any chance to go back to the family if you can prove that a demon was possessing you? Or do you think that bridge has already been burned? Mm. Hard to say, because the the family is shrouded in like so much mystery, like even even to me. So like especially like given last session where it wasn't the same branch of the family, but a different branch of the family kind of reached us, out to us and was saying like, hey, you want to work together on some stuff? And that seems suspicious as fuck, but was <laughs> not something I was expecting. I, I honestly thought that if anyone from the family caught wind of uh, where I was, that they would just be sending a hit squad immediately. <laughs> but I think... Honestly, I think that there is a chance because they strike me as extremely pragmatic. And if Raleigh could prove himself to not only be innocent, but an asset to the family, if that was a thing that Raleigh wanted at the time, then I, th I think there's a chance he could swing that. That's fair. Ah. Speaking of, there's a follow-up question, Ooh. which is... How much personal responsibility do you think Raleigh should carry for what he did while possessed, considering how close he is to some of the people that he hurt? Ooh, like me as a player? How much do I think? I think I, I think that that's both for you as a player and also for your character, just to see if there's maybe different perspectives. Gotcha. As far as Raleigh goes, like... His, all of his training in life would tell him to just 
not feel anything, just be like, no, like there's a very obvious, I was possessed. I did not do any of this myself. It was just someone using my body to do it. Obviously, I personally have like nothing to do with this. This is in no way my fault. But there is a there is a part of him that's kind of bubbling to the surface that very clearly feels a shit ton of guilt, especially because, you know, it happened to people that he's starting to really grow close to and feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and then yeah. how about you personally as a player? Um, me personally, I, th I do think there is an amount of responsibility on him. But it was definitely a very weird, unexpected situation that would have been very hard to predict. Like, really, he was just trying to buy a gift for his father to try and make up for a huge mistake that he made that kind of got him knocked a few rungs down the ladder for a couple of years. Like, uh, I'm not sure how much of that you know, but essentially no. he was... Raleigh was on a mission uh, in, like, a, a monastery to try and uh, go undercover for a while and get some information. But what he didn't realize going in was that um, the willpower that he exerts to keep himself from just going crazy and drinking people's blood gets a whole lot weaker if he doesn't consume meat. Like, a, mm. he didn't realize that kind of... Uh, meat was a kind of a good substitute like a like a nic nicotine patch for a for a covering smoker type of thing mm. so while he was in there he kind of went feral and ate a guy oh. and uh yeah the uh, the family especially driftwood is very much not about that kind of collateral damage because it just it risks the mission mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he was not trusted to go on any really big missions for quite a while after that, so he was buying a, a magic item from a different branch of the family to try and get back in his, uh, his dad's good graces. But either because it, the information was hidden from him or he just didn't do enough research, the item contained a demon that possessed him and... Kind of fucked everything up for like two straight years. Mm -hmm. And you gotta, you gotta get your stuff identified, man. Indeed, <laughs> yeah. He, he, uh, yeah. he maybe should have done a little more legwork on that, and not just trusted a branch of the mafia. <laughs> that's entirely fair. I think that's that's something that like I'm really interested in for Raleigh's perspective of, yeah, I, I couldn't possibly be held responsible. Like it was, they were just using my body. But there were so many steps up to the point before possession that Raleigh could have intervened and prevented that, like, especially with the perspective of, like, information is everything. You have to know as much as possible. It's all, it, all this stuff. The fact that he had this training, had this mindset, and slipped up and didn't check in on it, and then was used by this force and also by the people giving him the item possibly depending on what they knew uh that he he didn't do due diligence and then hurt people because of his lack of preparation and his lack of forethought like that's that's an interesting aspect to me if that was presented to him if he would change his tune at all yeah like like right right now he Definitely when it came up, he was very quick to apologize, but internally he's grappling with it a lot more. It's like, I, I shouldn't feel bad about this, but I do, and I don't know how to feel about that. That's fair. I, I think, like, the, the actions that he took while possessed are debatably a sort of ethical gray area for him specifically because he wasn't in control of his actions, but everything leading up to that I personally find as like based on his attitude and his worldview I find that especially that that he should be super culpable in in his actions for that because like if information is power then you were thoroughly weak in that moment and it led to people getting hurt because you didn't look into it that's that's cool I, I like it basically is what I'm saying yeah. uh it's is neat so Next question, speaking of guilt, regret, and remorse, <laughs> is for Vogan. 
Uh, <laughs> you have a past you're obviously not proud of, mm -hmm. and you you've discussed that over this over this session. Uh, but the the question I have after what's already been discussed is how does Vogan cope with the guilt of everything that he's done? Like how how does he grapple with it emotionally, and how does he get through the day every day? So imagine, okay, picture a, a glass jar, okay? <laughs> now picture his emotions, just like a, 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 th a thing you can put into this jar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just cram it into this jar. Mm -hmm. You put the lid on and you throw it away. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think this you is a perfect away that analogy. Jar. I think yeah. this is a perfect analogy because it is a glass jar being thrown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's gonna maybe lead to some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, he uh <laughs> he so it's it's weird. Like he does he absolutely does like regret his past actions and whatnot he doesn't he doesn't regret like his you know he doesn't regret ever being like a hobgoblin or like the skills he possessed like uh he's just he regrets how he got them he doesn't regret that he does have them but he regrets how he got them mm -hmm. uh and how does he cope um he just he really just doesn't want to think about it. That's how he copes. Like he just mm -hmm. does all he can to not think about his past actions, mm -hmm. but all, like keeping them at a distance. Like he can just look at them. It's like I don't like you over there. So I'll change. Mm -hmm. But if they ever were like thrown in his face, like uh, he would have no idea how to how to tackle that situation. Mm -hmm. Like if one of his previous victims likes like sons ever came up to him just like like with a dagger it's like you killed my dad i'm gonna kill you it's like well you have every right to <laughs> <laughs> um also, a little bit of a humble brag in there that like his victims always surely died yeah <laughs> like it couldn't possibly be a man who's very maimed oh. coming back up and being like yeah. you almost killed me i'll kill you like no no <laughs> bogan was thorough there is no yeah. chance anyone he's affected walked away alive. No, he, he made sure. <laughs> he was he was very thorough and very proud of his work. <laughs> oh. But that's that's something yeah. I'm I'm curious about with the idea of Vogan is trying to get on this path to better himself and become like a better person and to in some ways atone for the stuff that he's done. But he's not reflecting on anything that he has done. Would you say that he's more running away from his problems by trying to fix other people's or would you say? Absolutely. That he... Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. He, he is, he does not want to deal with his past in a very, in a very well, like, you know, constructive way. Uh, <laughs> he, you, he's mostly going off of like what his, his master told him. Like, to him, his master is his 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 guiding light. Like she can do no wrong, sort of sort of deal. So like he does everything he says, uh, everything she says. Mm -hmm. So she'll he's just, like she told him like, all right, go on this pilgrimage. Yes, got it. <laughs> Be a better person. You got it. <laughs> so that's, that's his goal right now. Um, mm -hmm. But. So yeah, he's, I haven't he's heard about well. Vogan's master at all. Uh, would you mm -hmm. mind going into a little more detail about her? Sure. Yeah. Um, in his in his past, he the way he like was kicked out of the Hellrock army is his his superior uh, Lekazod ba was basically telling everybody uh, in the Hellrock army to like, hey, let's go join up with the Crystal Queen. Uh, and Vogan was like, nah, dude, I'm fine where I am. And so he challenged him, um, and he got beaten within an inch of his life, uh, mm -hmm. and basically just left to die. Everybody assumed he, he, he died, but he miraculously lived, obviously. Um, and he stumbled his way into basically his master's path. Uh, her name is Elmira. She is a, she's an elf, 
who uh, who's lived for a very long time, um, and who was also a who was also a blue metal uh, a way of the blue metal fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, so she, for not uh, basically no reason, took him in and mm -hmm. uh, taught him, you know, the way of the blue metal, like how to how to be better and all that stuff. And he like he lit she literally saved his life. She is his she's like his messiah. <laughs> she is a, a being that can't be touched. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, she's very, very precious to him. Hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does with with that being the case, does Vogan ever honestly think that he can reach the point that's been kind of asked for him to reach? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Like he he's trying to make as much like progress as he can, but I think he he puts too much pressure on himself probably. Like he's he's trying to reach a standard that is like impossible probably. Mm -hmm. Like so in his mind he will never atone. He's just doing his best. Like mm -hmm. he there's in his mind there's no possible way he can atone for every like all the past crimes he's done. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. fair. That's that's really interesting dynamic wise that you kind of have a character whose goals seem to be driven exclusively by somebody else that's not even like orbiting around you physically like there's mm. you've basically yeah. been sent on a mission that you can't know where the end is ever because <laughs> like this person's not there to be like and you did it you've you've successfully atoned <laughs> go retire now yeah uh, like that's that's probably never going to happen unless you seek her out so that's it's interesting yeah. that you got this this never ending journey sort of thing yeah. that's not even motivated by personal reasons like for somebody mm. else's sake. It's cool. Yeah. I I mean, technically, it. there's like there is sort of an end goal. Like basically, the the pilgrimage he's mm. sent on is to like find all of the Idolin temples, uh, and then like report back to her. Essentially, mm -hmm. it's like okay, cool, can do. <laughs> but gotcha. past that point he has got no idea that's and also thing. almira is sort of with the party at the moment okay um they had to like rescue her from the crystal queen's castle um so she's with the party at the moment but she's planning on leaving pretty soon anyway mm. so that's that is thing. it's only temporary that's a good yeah. yeah okay so speaking of backstory elements and these are some names that i don't fully recognize but a uh, question for Raleigh. Assuming mm -hmm. the highest standard continues to grow and develop a reputation, the Driftwood organization will probably eventually notice that you are with them. Do you think staying is a good idea? <laughs> Honestly, like, f based on, like, what happened, like, just last session, it seems more than a little likely that they already know, like, the Unseen Hand branch of the family definitely already knows. But I don't know if the Driftwood branch uh, that Raleigh was a part of uh, knows. But it's definitely it's definitely on his mind. He, uh, he, there's definitely an urge in the back of his mind to just bug out and like just disappear into the night. Okay, now I have a follow-up question for that. Why? Is, is that because he's concerned for his own personal safety? Or because he's concerned for the safety of everybody around him that he's been traveling with? If you were to ask Raleigh himself, he would say his personal safety. But, like, it's mostly for the safety of other of, uh, of the guild. He would just be very reluctant to acknowledge that about himself. That's fair. Yeah. It's interesting that you have a character who's all about information being power not being able to admit things to himself <laughs> and yeah. therefore not having information <laughs> <laughs> by yes. take of sheer stubbornness 
<laughs> he is a conundrum. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a garbage fire of a character. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a mess. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Speaking of your character, <laughs> would you tell us more about your pact with your patron? Does Raleigh remember forming it before his memory loss, or did he form it afterwards? It was definitely a post-memory loss thing. Um, basically, like as far as he remembers, is he like got the magic item, blacked out for about two years, woke up in the desert in the Strike Lands, which is a uh, yeah, like, hobgoblin territory is just, like, a constant war zone, from what I hear. With, uh, basically a couple of random, uh, knickknacks on his person that were his only clues as to, uh, what the demon had been up to while he was possessing his body. And somewhere after he woke, sometime after he woke up, uh, he was getting kind of mental messages from some sort of being, like, drawing him toward, uh, toward the ocean. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was when, uh, yeah, his his patron appeared before him and offered him a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, just offering him like, hey, I'll I'll give you power, you know, to to kind of survive what's coming to you, if uh, if you'll track down this demon, which you probably have a pretty vested interest in tracking down and killing. And, uh, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Definitely at the time, he uh, he definitely didn't trust whatever this thing was, but <laughs> options being limited and their goal seeming to align, at least for now, it seemed like, yeah, yeah, th- this seems like, uh, I, I, should, I should just, uh, I should accept this and see where this goes. <laughs> what, uh, in, in regard to that, do you think if you use your powers to hunt down and kill this demon thing, do you think you'll still be a warlock? <laughs> Probably not from, you know, from what I've seen of warlocks. Kind of seems like once I am no longer of use to uh, my patron, I'll probably just be on my own and without any sort of magical ability anymore. <laughs> Entirely fair. Yeah. With God, that Logan being... Logan likes taking away warlock powers from people, man. Giveth and taketh <laughs> away, indeed. Yeah, I am very much basing these guesses on exactly what happened to Spencer. <laughs> oh. What a whole thing. Uh, what an entire thing. So being that you have this timer that is that is somewhat stopping you from maybe having this power forever... If you got the chance to fight your patron and get its idolic armament, would you? <laughs> um, I mean, now, fuck no, because we would be vaporized. Yeah, no. Sure. But like, you know, give it like, I don't know, 15 levels or something. <laughs> Maybe. <level> 20. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. We uh, we've very much been given the impression that uh, not all idolins or idolos are created equal. Like some are basically just slightly more powerful versions of regular monsters, like the basilisk. Mm-hmm. That uh, yeah, Hrock. But uh, Morganite seems to be kind of a cut above, and uh, yeah, going going against him would. Uh, that would not end well for us. <laughs> Possibly fair. <laughs> but, okay. So, next question is, supposedly many Pact of the Idolos Warlocks have the goal to become Idolos themselves. Does Raleigh have similar end goals? If so, what kind of Idolos would he want to be? Hmm. I don't know that, like... At this stage in his life, I don't think he's really all that all that power hungry like earlier in his life he he dreamed of kind of like moving up the driftwood organization like maybe if he was like super good at his job running it like who knows as like a crazy pipe dream Mm. but i think that was just kind of high as it went now his his main goal is just to not be hunted by 
who knows how many people. Mm-hmm. If uh, if he were presented with that like as a legitimate option and not something that he would have to, you know, uh, kind of go out of his way to figure out whether that's even possible. Like if that if if someone were trying to to try to tempt him with that, maybe he would. Uh, I think maybe there's a good chance he might uh, go down that route. But it's definitely not a thing that's on his list of priorities at the moment. Hmm. That's fair. That's entirely fair. So next question is for both of you. Uh, I know. This question is for Bogan and Raleigh. As the okay. only two members of the group that were not that are not friends with each other, <laughs> how does that affect your interactions with the party and with each other? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Mostly a lot of sniping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh of... no, he got locked in the ghost room. Guess he's uh. gone. <laughs> oh man, he uh, the door disappeared. Well, he's lost forever now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Nothing we can do. Nothing to be done. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, that's man. Fun. That was. <laughs> uh, that's that's funny. But uh, how does it affect our interaction? Like, it's very very cold, I guess. From yeah. uh, at least on Vogan's part, like in the. Some of the earlier sessions, Raleigh did some things that Vogan didn't like at all. So <laughs> he sort of clutched on to that. Um, and based on previous information that he told um, that he would that he knows about Raleigh, like this is before like his actual name got revealed. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's just implied to him that he's like all right he's probably keeping more secrets than than i like uh um he's not to be trusted and he still has that opinion about raleigh um at the at the moment so yeah he's just not he's not a fan of raleigh he's uh it's fair yeah and and raleigh how do you think this is affected your relationship (laughs) um i think early on he figured they were kind of more similar than they actually were like uh like early on he stole a bag of holding and he kind of thought that vogan would back him up on that (laughs) (laughs) that they were both kind of you know out for themselves and that they should uh have each other's backs being like (laughs) <laughs> just kind of the shit lords that he he thought they both were but that did not turn out to be the case and yeah he definitely kind of he's not quite as openly hostile as vogan is to him but he he keeps him kind of at arm's length he he finds it a little bit uh hypocritical how like untrustworthy vogan seems to to think he is considering you know all of the really bad things that vogan has done but it's like Eh, as long as he's not literally threatening to kill me, then like Raleigh did. Just be <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Like Raleigh threatened him. <laughs> <laughs> eh, in, I mean, yeah, basically, but it was a little more vague. Uh-huh. <laughs> it would just be like, I have information on you. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Speaking <laughs> of, which is as pretty much as good as a death threat in this town, the town that we were in, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, Vogan, does the yeah. early conflict with Raleigh regarding his threat still affect his interactions? <laughs> still affect your interactions <laughs> with him? And to what extent do you think? But Absolutely. <laughs> to that end, how could that be resolved? Uh, he absolutely still holds on to that, to that threat. <laughs> it's like, you threatened me and you're doing a bunch of shady shit. So you're not helping your case whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> uh to what extent do you, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, uh, no, left an impression on him but to the end how could that be resolved 
um just through his actions i guess like the more trustworthy raleigh like uh i guess seems i guess the more uh the more trust he'll put into raleigh but the moment he hasn't really done a lot to dig himself out of that hole that he <laughs> that he buried himself in uh like like the good deeds that raleigh has done to vogan it seems like he just did it out of self-preservation mm -hmm. so so he, it's uh, it seems like more the reason behind his actions is more important than his actions themselves exactly yeah okay that's that's fair Mm -hmm. So, with that being the case, speaking of actions and mm -hmm. what they mean, would Raleigh kill one of his own teammates <laughs> to keep something secret? <laughs> Additionally, would Vogan attack Raleigh if he found out Raleigh was still keeping secrets? <laughs> so, Raleigh, Raleigh, you first. Would you kill your friends? Would you kill them? Ooh... Then would you depends do it, Raleigh? <laughs> <laughs> it probably depends on this on uh, a secret, right? <laughs> yeah, it would have to be a pretty huge secret. Like, okay, without without revealing the secret, do you currently have a secret that is worth killing a teammate over? I'm not yes sure he no. does anymore. Like all of his big stuff kind of got dragged out. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we've already found out that, you know, through the, the Esper, that thanks to the demon, he kind of maybe helped start a civil war, Ooh. among other things. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's hard to think of what else, like, what else Raleigh could find out that he would be so desperate to keep secret that he would kill one of his teammates, considering more and more every day what his teammates think of him me means a heck of a lot to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay i have i have a question then that that i'm thinking about if in the in the dead of night raleigh was approached by his previous family that like the the fucking fuck your shit up branch of his family shows up and is like we know where you are we know what you're doing and we will kill all of you unless you show us your loyalty by killing one of your allies in their sleep huh would he <laughs> so they're, they're threatening to kill all of us unless i kill one of them yes hmm they they claim to know everything about you in this hypothetical and what's going on. They they claim to have all the cards. Oof. I think you would definitely think long and hard on it. Okay, let's double down. It has to be Quintus. <laughs> then no. <laughs> I cannot fathom a scenario where he would be willing to kill Quintus. He would desperately try to find some other way. I think entirely fair. Yeah. If it was uh if the situation were flipped where um he was forced to kill someone from the family that he used to work with uh or else like the party might find out something bad about him, I think he would be way 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 more willing to do that. Mhm. Mm <laughs> okay. Then something that is in the middle that I have a question about, because you would be willing to kill somebody in the family to prove your loyalty to the party, and you would not be willing to kill somebody in the party to prove your loyalty to the family. If, same offer on the table, basically, uh, but the family says, you have to basically die in order for us to not kill anybody else here, would he do that? Would he Ooh. sacrifice himself to protect everybody else? Fuck. Hmm. That is. <sighs> At this stage in the campaign, I think it would be a very hard decision. It could honestly go either way. Entirely fair. 
Because yeah. he Based definitely on... he cares a he cares a lot more about the party than he's willing to admit. But yeah, if he were being truly honest with himself, which he very rarely is, then he would never do it. But like his prag his pragmatic training would be like so ingrained in him that he'd really give it more thought than he should. Mm -hmm. That's that's entirely fair. Mm -hmm. Follow up question for both of you: Do oh. Vogan and Raleigh think of the party as their friends? Do they believe they deserve to have friends at all? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> Vogan thinks most of the party, at least, uh, are are his friends. I guess I guess he mostly latch onto like Lexi and Quintus as his as the people he's closest to in the party, at least. I'd say. I'd say not friends, but people he's close with is the distinction he'd make. Uh, because following in, regarding the follow-up question, he doesn't think he deserves friends. <laughs> uh, so he has, uh, he has people he's close to and he wouldn't want th bad things to happen to, but he, he doesn't believe that... He doesn't believe that they're friends with him, I guess. Hmm. So. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Raleigh. I'd say if you asked him, he'd probably call them like co-workers or guildmates or comrades or whatever. And yeah, d d deep down, he, uh, he does not really think he deserves friends. He's kind of coming to grips with the idea that the worldview he grew up with is not 100% accurate in a lot of a lot of ways and uh, he's trying to figure out how to deal with that and what that means about him like if he's just too fucked up to really be anyone's friend mm -hmm. I get yeah so with with Vogan having the the view that like he does not deserve to have friends, mm -hmm. why does Vogan want to change? Like he's obviously gone through a lot, and he views his past actions as monstrous, and he doesn't like it. But mm -hmm. why does he choose to better himself? Is it? Is it because of a sense of remorse from that, that he feels motivated to change himself to better himself? Is it a mm -hmm. goal to work exclusively towards your master's wishes that you don't have agency anymore and you just want to do what you're told to attempt to atone for things? Is it worth attempting to atone in the first place? Is there any salvation at all? And if mm -hmm. there is... Why would he work towards it? Is it to better the world? Is it a favor to his master? Is it for himself? Like, deep down, what does Vogan want to see happen because of his change? So... Whew, okay. <laughs> I gotta think about this. Um, uh, I guess the reason he wants to change is because, like, mostly guilt. Um, like... He has a, a deep sense of uh, regret regarding his past actions and whatnot. And also it's a combination of like, uh, I have to live up to my my uh, my master's wishes. Um, so I'll, I'll do what I'm told and I'll also put out, put some good out in the world that I have taken away from it. Uh, so it's a... It's a, a best, like the best of a bad situation sort of deal where he 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 wants to atone for all the things he's done because he's just so guilt ridden. Mm -hmm. uh, but, if and okay, his if master is... presented a, a way to to do so, essentially. Mm -hmm. So because he is so guilt ridden. And he, as you kind of said before, he's not sure if he thinks he can atone. 
is there a point to attempt atonement or would it just be better if he wasn't around like has vogan already done enough damage like why why is he trying to better himself and make the world a better place if he doesn't think he can do that i i think it's just a matter of of trying like he he doesn't like he doesn't think that there's like uh, a point he can reach that he would be satisfied with um but it's just a matter of of tr of trying as hard as he can to get to the point where his master would even be like a proud of proud of him but i i guess he's just working to as as hard as he can to i guess to even try to get to the point where he's satisfied mm -hmm. but he doesn't he doesn't really have a good motivation for for even uh trying to atone hmm. but yeah he's uh <laughs> it's an interesting case i guess yeah. yeah i guess he's mostly just doing as he's told at the moment hmm. so with that he's just doing what he's been told when you complete your pilgrimage and you feel you become adequate enough if that ever happens what do you plan to do next if there's <laughs> no further instruction he does he has not thought of that <laughs> he has not thought that far ahead <laughs> um <laughs> it's just it was like, well, I guess I'm done. I'll just go away forever now. <laughs> oh no! Like, <laughs> he he doesn't have an end goal. Um, as as far as he's concerned, like that's his life is done at that point. Like, mm -hmm. all right, all right, cool. Y'all are satisfied. All right, I'll just go away forever. <laughs> but. I think the thing that like after after hearing a lot of this and hearing about your character. I think that Vogan is driven internally, whether he chooses to admit it or not, that he personally wants to see the world become better and that he personally wants to be better and that he wants to make the world better because of his presence, if he maybe doesn't want to admit it himself. Like, mm -hmm. if, if he was purely acting for self-betterment and to, like, do what his master told him to do, he wouldn't give a fuck about Raleigh. Like, yeah. if, if it was purely <laughs> what he wanted to do because he was told to do it, then hearing that there's somebody keeping so many secrets and being such a dick in the past, like, if there's somebody like that, that shouldn't affect him. Like, really. If, mm. if he only wants to improve himself. So I think, based on what you've kind of told me about your character, I think he hopes somewhere somehow that he maybe can be redeemed and that he does have a place in the world mm -hmm. is what it sounds yeah. like yeah you're, you're, you're just not sure personally <laughs> I, I i believe that you're right like deep down like in a part that he doesn't know exists like he wants to see the world as a a better place like he wants to have made a an impact on the on the world and his and his friends his comrades his, <laughs> uh uh but at the moment he's acting under the under the uh, the guise of he's like yeah i'm just trying to make myself better at the moment <laughs> okay so. i have i have another question for you then similar to the one that i had for raleigh a pure hypothetical situation Mm -hmm. once you complete your pilgrimage and you report back to your master with all of this stuff, if they ask you to do something sinister, like, obviously this is not right, like, that they've had ulterior motives this whole time, what would Vogan do? If it was Almira asking? Yes. He would do it? <laughs> <laughs> no oh. questions asked. <laughs> Well, would probably he... questions asked, but then like, all right, well, you, you're the boss. <laughs> That's fair. So you don't think at any point Vogan would resist her 
uh, orders under any circumstances. Probably not. No. Like if if she if she said, "All right, now the best way to atone is to kill everybody in your party," he would just be like, "All right, you got it." I was like, "Well, they must have done some bad shit." Here we go. <laughs> Damn. Like, yeah. He's well, like I said before. He is. She is her. She is his messiah. So. <laughs> That's that's interesting. Do you think at any point there's even remotely a chance that Vogan might see her differently? At the moment, like where his character currently is, mm-hmm. no, he he would absolutely take her word take her words just at face value, like and mm-hmm. just follow them. Um depending on where his character goes, like He's able to like think for himself, mm-hmm. but uh, maybe there's a chance. Like, hey, hey, uh, ma- uh, master, uh, that's that's weird that you'd say that. Why would you do that? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also interesting to me that Vogan has so much of a kind of moral stance of it doesn't matter what somebody does; it matters like why they do it. Uh, Mm -hmm. that, like, specifically for Raleigh, Raleigh was motivated by, like, survival instincts or whatever, so all the good doesn't matter. Or Raleigh Mm -hmm. was motivated by greed, so, like, it's it's an even worse thing, or, like, whatever the the situation is. But he doesn't apply that to himself, because he's just taking orders right now. Yeah. That's that's, (laughs) that's kind of an interesting stance to... Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> to be taken, but I, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm, I'm interested in where your character is gonna go and where he's gonna grow mm-hmm. to. Oh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Very last question. Surprise, oh last question for both of you. Oh boy. Which questions were asked by Logan? <laughs> if you guessed correctly, I have been told by Logan himself. That your character will receive a point of inspiration for each question you have correctly guessed. Ooh. Two you guesses have each. two guesses each. Okay. Begin. Oh. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Interesting. Has to be for your character? Oh, mm-hmm. oh, okay, gotcha. Has to be for your character, yes. Okay. Hmm, all right. Uh, does that include like Vogan and Raleigh questions, or just I do for, not like, believe the that there have been any combo questions that have been asked. But by I, Vo- I by don't Logan. know. You can you can guess. You can try. Okay. Let's see, let's see how you feel. All right. I stay. Um, I stay. Okay. Hmm. Give it a good thing. All right. All right. All right. There's inspiration right. on the line. I know. It's terrifying. Okay. Let me read through these questions once more. Yep. Take your time. Uh, By all means. By all means. Um. Hmm. Where is this list of questions? It is in the the chat 19 chat in the server that we are in. Oh. I did not see it there. (laughs) The the audience, (laughs) you've all peeked behind the curtain. We have our calls in a server. It's true. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Okay. Let's see. I think. Dare the... you determine which? I questions? think. I think the first question for Raleigh was asked by Logan. Um. The first. Uh, the fir- to clarify, the stake question was asked by Logan. You think? Oh no no sorry sorry no 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 not that one. Uh, okay. Because the first there was like a was... separate there's like a separate message. Uh, okay. I see. on my screen that's like that shows <laughs> <laughs> but, I did a quadruple <laughs> take when you're like oh Logan wants to know he's very Logan. interested in our steak choices <laughs> <laughs> the, okay also to clarify as as extra points your you I would recommend that you guess the questions for your character oh, so man. you should be finding the ones for Vogan oh I want more qu- oh man I want more inspiration though <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that steak uh, guess really was going to get you rolling in the inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. 
Uh, I'm gonna say the the uh, this question here. The uh, you have a past that you're not proud of. How do you view your past actions, and and if you feel guilt, how do you cope or deal with that guilt? I think that one's asked by by Logan. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. Okay. Wait. Are there only like how many questions are there just for Bogan? Just for Vogan? Let me check. Mm, there are like I'm only one, like... uh, digga, 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 two, two, I'm counting as I scroll. Uh, three, three, four, five. Okay. Very good. Very, very good odds when you eliminate the combo questions. Mm hmm. 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 Okay, so. Yeah, I'm going to say that one. I'm going to say... I'm going to say the... Um, the last one. The the If you complete your pilgrimage and feel you've become an adequate person, what do you plan to do next? I believe that was for Log- That was from Logan. All right, those are your two guesses. Your, your yeah. first <laughs> guess was uh, the past. The specific question, just to clarify... You have a past you're not proud of. How do you feel your past actions? How do you feel about your past actions? And if you feel guilt, how do you cope with that guilt? That's the question you're picking, correct? Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, for Vogan, if you complete your pilgrimage and feel you've become an adequate person, what do you plan to do next? Those are are your two picks. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will wait to reveal until Izzy also has chosen. Okay. I'm going to guess... The bit about uh, supposedly many packed of the Idolos warlocks have the goal to become Idolos themselves. Does Raleigh have similar goals? Okay, all right. Guess that. Mm-hmm. And da, 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 da. you had a couple more questions, my boy. So it's, it's you did. quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> Let's guess. It's what you get for having such a complicated backstory. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, I have such issues keeping it all straight. <laughs> uh, let's say... How much personal responsibility do you think Raleigh should carry for what he did while possessed? Okay. So, to clarify, your, your two questions that you're picking are the first one was the become an idolos is that the one that you're picking first yeah yes so the question was supposedly many packed of the idolos warlocks have the goal to become idolos themselves does raleigh have similar goals and the second question that you picked was how much personal responsibility do you think raleigh should carry for what he did while possessed considering how close he is to some of the people he hurt and just clarifying those are the two you've chosen correct yes i'm gonna lock those in all right Spencer, yeah, your first guess was mm-hmm. incorrect. Makes sense. I I actually rewrote another question to become that question. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> the second guess was a Logan question. Hey, oh, what that? <laughs> the second guess was uh. Da, 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 da. The, was it the pilgrimage one? I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, yeah. If yes. you complete your yes. your pilgrimage, yeah. that was a Logan question. Hooray! Now, now for Izzy, oh. your first guess of the Idolos warlock situation was incorrect. Damn, that was, that was not the one a I was Logan more question. confident about. Wonderful. So then, your second guess that you were a little less confident about. Was a Logan question. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> did it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We each got our second guesses correctly. <laughs> Hooray. And it what helped were the Logan questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll reveal them here. The Logan questions were Vogan. If you complete your pilgrimage and you feel you've become an adequate person, what do you plan to do next? Right. And obviously the Raleigh, how much personal responsibility uh, do you carry for what you did while possessed? Then the second uh, Vogan question, because there were two Vogan questions, two Raleigh questions, were, mm-hmm. Vogan, does the early conflict with Raleigh regarding his threats still affect his interaction, still affect your interactions with yeah. him? Yeah. 
to what extent I, do you think? Oh, I was debating on that one too. <laughs> uh, and then the second Raleigh question was, assuming the highest standard continues to grow and develop a reputation, the Driftwood organization will probably eventually notice you with them. Do you think staying with them is a good idea? Oh. Mm. Those were the Logan questions. Those were the, yeah. those were the shiny Logan questions. Curses. Well, why don't you ain't bad? <laughs> I was gonna say the <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Logan to to write the the steak question. Right, <laughs> it's honestly a toss up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past. No I was so steak. seriously shocked when I thought that was what you were picking. <laughs> like no, the balls on this man to get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but oh, at any man. rate. Those those are all of our questions. Uh, I hope that if you guys watched and submitted a question, that it got answered on the stream and that you guys enjoyed it, that you had a good time. Uh, everybody in the call, thank you for coming on and having a good time. Thanks for answering all these questions with me. You're welcome, sir. Oh. Thank you for interviewing us. Yes, it was such a wonderful time. There were so many good questions. We delved so so far into into character. We we really we really dug deep. I think this time. And mm -hmm. like we do, like we do almost every time. I'd like to think, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll hopefully next time I get the both of you in a call, get you closer to crying, which is my goal every time. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> closer to crying. Oh my god, one of these times sure you're, you're almost able to get like bread, right? Oh, uh, one of these times I will drive one of the players to tears over do over it. deep, meaningful conversations about their character. Uh, get but, Logan. Get Logan oh, when <laughs> when you, yeah, you interview him. <laughs> get oh, him to cry. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the, gonna be a challenge. That's the end goal. <laughs> oh, that's the end boss right there. That's how I know I'll succeed. On, that's on the BBEG. Yes. <laughs> well, speaking <laughs> of, the next time that we do Chat 19 mm -hmm. is going to be asking Logan about his NPCs. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that yeah. will be quite the session indeed. And so maybe I'll them. make Logan cry. Probably not, but we'll see. I have a whole Do month it. to prepare. If, <laughs> if anyone that's listening to this end of the podcast, thank you for sticking around for so long. I appreciate you. Yeah, and if you're so you have, lovely. If you have any questions that you would like to ask us that might appear for the Logan boy, go ahead and get on Twitter. And tweet at us uh, at hashtag chatnet19 so that we can get your questions and rep record them all. And uh, maybe uh, maybe the, that, that next time might be featuring some guests and what they think about certain NPCs, such as Carrie and Aaron. Maybe. Solid possibly. <laughs> you never know. You never know who's going to show up on that next time. But it will have Logan. So send Logan all of your NPC-related questions. Uh, and we'll see... If we can either get him to reveal a crippling spoiler that will then be revealed for every player, or, or who the NPCs want a wife, <laughs> oh, that's gonna be the whole thing. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> the whole thing is just gonna be who wife, and then Logan will sit there for an hour and a half and tell me who every single NPC would wife and their interactions with each other. I want to hear that podcast. Oh. <laughs> That it's sounds time. delightful. I have no idea how this is going to go, but it should be a very good time. So Yay. tune in next time for Chat 19. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Spencer and Izzy, for coming by talking about your characters. And Yay. I will see you guys next time on Chat 19. Goodbye, Bye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.